there's no uh, better gifts in this world than a book about Hitler. So thank you so much. I, I've gotten a gift when I was, what were you talking yes, about? Yes, right, right. The watch from Joe Rogan, and this almost beats it. So, uh, <laughs> so tell me what uh, this particular book on Hitler is. So this is volume two. Yes. So this is Ian Kershaw. He wrote the famous two volume on Hitler. I'm a big book nerd, and I spend a lot of time reading biographies in particular. So this one, um, if you need a one volume, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, right? I think you talked about that, William yeah. Shire, because that's like Hitler's rise, Nazi Germany, the war, etc. But I like bios because it's the a good biography is story of the times, right? And so this one, the first volume, it does exactly that, which is that it doesn't just tell the story of Hitler. It's the context of poor, you know, this kid in Austria and he's got all these dreams, but then actually pretty courageous in terms of World War One, right? Gets pinned to metal on by the Kaiser. And then what it's like to have to lose World War One and actually like lose this this stain and then the rise within everybody knows that story, the beer hall putsch and all that. This one I like. And the reason I like Kershaw is obviously, number one, it's English, which is actually hard, right? Like in order to write that story, who can do both the primary source material and then translate it for people like us. But he tells the dynamic story of Hitler so well. Um, in the second volume, just like the the level of detail. And you've, you've talked about this, Lex, like what was it like inside that room, mm -hmm. inside with Chamberlain? Like yeah. what was it like in terms of who was this like magnetic madman who did convince the smartest people in the world at the time? And, you know, up until like 1940, the Soviet gamble, like was it, he took tremendous risks, but like highly calculated. Yeah. Thinking, no, 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 I'm not going to pay for this one. I'm not going to pay for this one. And it put himself, he had a remarkable ability, not just to put himself in the minds of the German people, but in terms of his adversaries. Like with when he was across from Mussolini. Calculate, he's like, how exactly did Mussolini, the guy who created fascism, becomes like second fiddle to Hitler? I think it's an amazing bio. And yeah, like Ian Kershaw, along with Richard Evans, two of my favorite authors on the Third Reich, no question. Do you, you think he was born this way, that charisma, whatever that is, or was it something he developed strategically? That's like the question you apply to some of the great leaders. Was he just a madman who had the instinct to be able to control people when in the room together with them, or is this like he worked at it? I think he worked at it, and but but also there is an innate quality. I'm forgetting his name, his lifelong Ru Rudolf, ha the one who flew to Berlin in like 1940. I, I forget his name. Anyway, so he he helped Hitler write Mein Kampf, and he was like slavishly yeah. Yeah. devoted to him in prison. This is 1925 or something like that. And so you read that and you're like, well, how does he get this like you know, yeah. crank wacko to basically believe he's like the second coming, help him write this book? I mean, literally, they lived together in the prison cell and they would wake up every day. And as he was composing Mein Kampf and because of the beer hall putsch and all that had this like absolute ability to gather people around him. I think his greatest skill was is he was just a very good politician. Truly. I mean, if you look at his ability in order to read coalitional politics and then convince exactly the right people in order to follow him. I think I heard you ask this once and I've thought about it a lot, which is like, who could have stopped Hitler in yeah. Germany, right? Like, it's always like the ever present question. Of course, like the whole baby Hitler thing. Really, the answer is Hindenburg. Like Hindenburg was the person who could have stopped and had the immense standing within the German public. The only, you know, real like war hero definitely was personally skeptical of fascism and Nazism. And didn't but like he was Hitler. Too, and he didn't like him. And he <laughs> knew he was full of shit. He was like, yeah, I think this guy is dangerous. I think this guy could do a lot of damage to the Republic. But he acceded basically to Hitler at the time. And I think that he was one of the main people who could have done something about it. And also he was able to uh, convince the generals, the military. I mean, that was, that was very interesting. And to convince Chamberlain and just, the other political leaders. 